Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree 15 of 2020, stipulating renaming the Royal Charity Organization to Royal Humanitarian Foundation. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 4 of 2020 restructuring the National Industry Protection and Support Committee. The edict stipulates that the Under Secretary for the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism for Industrial Affairs and Assistant Under Secretary for Industrial D Development will be NIPSC's Chairman and Deputy Chairman respectively. Director of Customs Clearance at the Interior Ministry, Director of Registration at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, and the ec Economist in Charge of Relations with the GCC countries at the Ministry of Finance and National Economy will serve as members at NIPSC for a renewable three-year term. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a telephone call from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince of Jordan, His Royal Highness Salih Hussein bin Abdullah II. During the call, the depth of ties between Bahrain and Jordan underpinned by continued bilateral cooperation across all levels were discussed. Regional and international developments regarding coronavirus and the joint efforts to reduce its effects were also discussed. On the occasion of the Royal Decree to rename the Royal Charity Organization to the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, His Majesty's Representative for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor, President of Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the organization, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, extended his thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for his support and interest in charitable and humanitarian causes which are being carried out by the organization in support of the orphans and widows and all the needy people in the kingdom to ensure their well-being. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that the new name comes as part of His Majesty the King's vision to expand the organization's scope of work and align with the Islamic principles and beliefs. He stated that His Majesty the King's initiative provided an opportunity to double the efforts and contributions in order to meet His Majesty's aspirations and ambitions to maintain Bahrain's leading position in the charity and humanitarian sector to ensure the well-being of everyone in Bahrain. For his part, the Secretary General of the organization, Dr. Mustafa Said, stated that the initiative is not unusual for His Majesty the King, as he is known for the King of Humanity, for his fatherly care of orphans, widows, and those in need in the kingdom. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzi Yazayna, chaired the weekly meeting where the Council approved a draft law on the Council's regulations. The Council also approved another draft law on amending the law of real estate leasing. The Council then approved the following proposals. Partial curfew throughout the Kingdom from 6 in the evening until 5 in the morning, with the exception of those who are required to do so including the postponement of installments due to citizens for pension replacement and housing loans, establishing a fund for all contributions and donations of business figures, national companies and banks that will be dedicated to all efforts exerted to combat the coronavirus and other issues, all ministries and service agencies to activate and convert all government services provided to the public into electronic services, disbursement of bonuses to the staff and volunteers to the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, granting the education authority the same leave as the students and dropping the interest on the decision to postpone the loans for a period of six months. The Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health and Chairman of the National Task Force for Combating Coronavirus COVID-19, Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, affirmed that the treatment protocol in Bahrain, which includes the use of hydroxychloroquine to treat existing cases of the COVID-19, has proven effective in the recovery of a number of existing cases of the virus in the kingdom, as Bahrain is one of the first countries in the world to have used the drug. He noted that it achieved great success and it was able to reduce the proportion of the virus and contributed to the reduction of its symptoms and complications. The President of the Supreme Council of Health stated that the Kingdom used the hydroxychloroquine on February 26, 2020, after the discovery of the first existing case of the virus in Bahrain on February 24, and noted that the National Task Force for Combating Coronavirus decided to use the drug on the existing cases based on the experiences of countries that have achieved remarkable success after using it as a treatment for the virus, such as China and Korea, where indicators of recovery of existing cases recorded after their treatment increased. 
Dr. Muhammad bin Abdullah affirmed that the hydroxychloroquine is used as a basic treatment for malaria as it is currently used in arthritis and lupus and has proven effectively after it has been applied to those who have special health conditions such as the presence of virus symptoms, pneumonia and risk factors. Following the royal directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to unite national efforts to face the repercussions of the global spread of the coronavirus at the local level and in a manner that preserves the health and safety of citizens and residents and in line with the continuation of the Kingdom's program to achieve sustainable development, after which a financial and economic package worth 4.3 billion dinars was announced, the Governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain, Rashid Al Maraj, stated that the postponing of installments by banks and companies must be without additional interest or profits and customers must pay the insurance company fees if any with regard to extending the life insurance policy.